for the audience. What verb best describes how you do your research? Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. My name is Dana and I'm an anthropologist conducting my research on astrobiology and how it is practiced for my dissertation research. My talk, Microbial Investigations Within Astrobiology, will describe what constitutes as astrobiological, uh, what constitutes as anthropological data, and by exploring following as a methodology, I'll walk you through how I formulate my questions and what I consider to be the preliminary analyses I can gather from it. So let's get started. In March, I accompanied a group of scientists from NASA Ames and Johns Hopkins University to their scientific analog site in the Atacama Desert in Chile. My presence in the desert wasn't necessarily to find microbes. In, um, their work was focused on locating certain sensors and retrieving data in order to inform their hypotheses about microbial investigations in these extreme environments, which they then could use to extrapolate for the search for evidence of life on, let's say, for example, Mars. Now, my work was focusing more on their emphasis on microbes. And I used the methodology of following to do so. And I did it in two different ways. First, after two years of preliminary research into the important tenets of astrobiology, I found that microbes were a pretty big deal. As such, it allowed me to focus on the hypotheses and questions I wanted to formulate, as well as what kind of sites I wanted to go to in order to conduct research on what it meant to study microbes in astrobiology. And I thought of this almost as analogous to the fall of the water strategy in NASA's flight detection missions in the 1990s. But following was also an immersive strategy for me to dive into the data. In archival research, for example, I would trace important figures or missions like the Ranger mission in the 1960s in order to understand the context of which these figures or missions unfolded. And that would give me insight into conceptions of contamination or what it meant to look for life on another planet in that early time. At scientific conferences, I would trace really important arguments or debates, and that would give me insight into how scientific communities debated, evaluated, and valued these different arguments. And finally, most recent relevant for this talk, fieldwork experience allowed me to follow not only just scientists, but the subjects that they were looking at, which were microbes. And this allowed me to put on an almost apprentice scientist hat and feel and be open to the dynamics of what astrobiology was in the doing. And what better to understand the questions that astrobiologists are asking about life and the origins of life than by being in the action. So for the rest of this talk, I'll focus on the question of what happens when you follow the microbe to give you an idea of what kind of data I'm interested in and how that shapes the analyses that I can do. So microbes are located inside halides found in the salt flats of the Atacama. And much of the data I gathered resulted from my observations of these samples, as well as my notes on my experiences. And so here are two stories for you. On the first day of sampling, I was asked to bring a hat, to wear long sleeves, and to bring sunglasses. And while I wore the hat and remembered the long sleeves, I completely forgot my sunglasses in the hotel. And as a result, I was unable to see the microbes that were living inside of these halides due to the lack of polarized lenses, and that made sampling extremely difficult. So I never forgot them again. And over the course of these 10 days, I learned what it actually meant to sample in the middle of the desert. I learned how to set up a station to properly mark um, plastic bags and to use a knife to scrape out the material. And this all became a part of my notes of what does it mean to actually do this kind of research in this site. Following the microbe allowed me a window into this astrobiological practice and to make three, what I'm gonna focus on are three preliminary analyses from this data. The first is the relationship between the doing of astrobiology and what that does for developing expertise in the field. This expertise I found was embodied, a result of repetition and practice that made things like finding a sensor in the middle of the desert or effectively using a knife to scrape up material almost intuitive. This relationship between doing and expertise speaks not only of a knowledge that you can acquire from a textbook or from a course, 
but of a sensorial knowing that allows scientists to understand patterns or recognize inconsistencies in their data that they can not only apply to their work in the field, but also when they go back to the lab or the, science, uh, to the office to do modeling. Second was an important connection between attention and hypothesis building. And now this may seem like a pretty obvious point. The better you attend to your research, the better the questions you can come up with. But I want to highlight the process of how this attention manifests. Personally, over the 10 days, I went from looking at a halite and being like, huh, what do I do with this thing? To quickly being able to recognize whether a halite would be easy to sample based on its texture, if it was soft or hard, or if it had more soil than salt, then it, I would know that maybe the microbes aren't living in that really dirty part where they wouldn't be able to get access to sunlight. And this was important not only for understanding the practical applications of um, question building in the field, but also how I could then think about these experiments on a larger scale uh, in a place I won't be able to go to, like Mars, where this work would be uh, hopefully applied. And finally, in translating uh, our, our imaginings of what these microbial communities were doing, we often fall back in our conversations to very human-like relationships, like the microbes were fighting for energy and resources, or talking about the collaborations between the photosynthesizing microbes and um, the other ones which were you know, maybe harvesting minerals from the ground. And that spoke to the connection between uh, our, the work being conducted on halides in the desert and how that we brought in different relations in our everyday lives to translate what these microbes were doing. And then on the flip side, it offered a really wonderful foundation for thinking creatively. What would it be like to be a microbe? What kind of ocean or really dry existence and would that be? And how would that form questions for understanding what life is and how it originates? So I hope with these preliminary takeaways, you're able to start thinking like an anthropologist and see how following a microbe can lead to really interesting analyses of what astrobiological practice means, not only in the field, but also beyond. So I'd like to think of conclusions as a kind of beginning. The questions of astrobiology in terms of the origin of life or what is life reverberate far beyond you know, the scientific labs or analog field experiments, and that's how I got interested in it. And I hope that my research will provide a window for understanding what, how these important questions are being grappled with in uh, such instances as the Atacama Desert, and then expand those discussions for a larger audience. So stay tuned. Um, I'd love to thank the scientists who allowed me to accompany them to the field, Dr. Davila, Sanjoy and BMSIS for their support and letting me uh, present here and also be a part of this family and then also for NSF for providing the funds for this research. So thank you for listening and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Dana. Floor is open for questions for Dana. Wrapped audience. <laughs> Dana, how translatable are your observations to not field work, but to labor laboratory work? Where you take the samples in the lab and then the same process again starts in the lab in terms of analysis and having your station and keeping your hands clean and so on. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's um, I don't want to say the same process because, oh, sorry, um, it's, there are differences from being in the field than being in the lab, but absolutely, um, knowing, knowing your lab bench, knowing the kinds of materials you need to use on an everyday, knowing that, you know, maybe that pipette is a little bit, you know, resistant and I want to use that one. I mean, all of this is part of science in the making and, and the methodologies that you draw upon are are evident in all different places. And so, yeah, absolutely. Observations and experiences and reflecting on those experiences is applicable not only in the field, but also pretty much anywhere for everything. That's why anthropology is really cool. So what is the, the, the one nugget that you took out from, I think this is probably your first time doing field work and, mm -hmm. and extreme environments. 
how did you come out of it as, a, as, a, as an anthropologist compared to when you went in? Um, well, besides the initial feeling of wanting to get another PhD in microbiology, which would be uh, a really interesting decision, I was, I really loved doing field work so far. I've done work in, uh, in archives. I've also done work at like conferences and I've attended a ton of different talks, but you know, actually being able to touch the materials that you read about just brings the perspective of the research in such a different way. And I know that I'll be a better writer and representation, like representer of these really fascinating processes and able to speak to the questions of astrobiology better having done this work. And so just even the perspective of just, you know, being a, an apprentice scientist is like invaluable for how I can then go on with my work. That's wonderful. I'm glad you had such a good experience. Oh yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Do, if anyone else wants to go somewhere, I'm happy to uh, <laughs> tag along. Thank you, Dana. This is a wonderful presentation. Thank you, everyone.